A rising tide might lift all boats, but rising seas are sinking us all. You might have heard 2012 was the second most expensive year for weather-related disasters. Intensified by the effects of climate change, they caused $139 billion in damages in the U.S. That's a lot of money by any measure. It's equal to almost 1% of our total economic output. It is, in effect, a climate disruption tax equivalent to a 2.7 percentage point increase in what Americans paid in sales taxes last year. In fact, many of these costs do end up being paid for out of our taxes. For example, out of the billions of dollars in damages caused by floods last year, private insurers only covered 10 to 15 percent of claims. Who's responsible for the rest? You guessed it. You and me and the rest of America's taxpayers through the National Flood Insurance Program. As you can see, it's nearly doubled in size over the past decade. As of today, it has nearly $1.3 trillion in policies outstanding. But this skyrocketing rate is not because of runaway spending in Washington. To a large extent, it's because private insurers are realizing that betting against the impacts of climate change is a losing bet. So they're leaving the table, which means the American taxpayer has become the insurer of last resort. To give you a sense of the scale, after Superstorm Sandy alone, the flood insurance program paid out so much that it's now over $30 billion in debt, and Congress has no idea how to fix it. That means you and I and fellow taxpayers will be footing the flood insurance bill for coastal landowners across America who can't find any private insurers to sell them a policy. Now, when you consider that scientists are telling us that these climate impacts are only going to get more extreme and more expensive in the years ahead, it's becoming increasingly obvious that we can't afford not to act to rein in the carbon pollution that is supercharging storms and floods. Our latest and greatest chance to do this is now on the table. The president has a big opportunity to reduce emissions from power plants. They are the nation's biggest carbon polluters. And under a plan put forth by the Natural Resources Defense Council, we can lower their emissions by more than a third by 2025. The plan provides great flexibility to states and utilities. Its benefits, worth between $25 and $60 billion in 2020, far outweigh the plan's costs of about $4 billion. The report is available at www.nrdc.org. Implementing it will save tens of thousands of lives through reductions in air pollution. And it will drive investments in energy efficiency and clean energy that will create thousands of new jobs across the nation. Now that's an insurance premium worth paying. 